Are you trying to dominate your fantasy football league? Do you want so many championship rings, it's impossible to sign autographs? Well, crack open a beer, pour yourself a glass of bourbon, and settle in, because you've come to the right place. Welcome to HammerCast. We're here to talk all things football, barbecue, bourbon, and beer. Here are your hosts, Kenneth Smith, David Stidham, and Chad Taylor. It's time to grind. Hello, Hammer Nation. It's your host, Kenneth Smith, and I am joined again today by my good friends, my partners, and my co-host, Chad Taylor and David Stidham. How we doing, boys? Doing good, man. Let's have some fun. Yeah, doing great, man. Looking forward mock to draft. it. Mock draft. Mock draft. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a mock draft for you guys tonight. As you can see the screen, we're sharing it with you. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. But before we get started, you know how we do it. Let's find out what everybody's sipping on tonight. What's going on, Dave? I see you lifting your glass. What do you got, bud? Hey, it wouldn't be Hammercast without bourbon, right? <laughs> uh, value bourbon. Jim Beam. Old school. Jim Beam Jim and Beam. dash of Coke. That's what I got. What do you got, Chad? Uh, man, been a been a long day today. I'm just uh, trying to uh, get a little little Coors Light in me tonight. So, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> all right, little several bullet for yourself. Yes, sir. Better than a silver rabbit, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Uh, I'm going with the old standby for me. Uh, it's mostly Coke and a uh, little splash of of, uh, of some rum, some cracking. So, hey, uh, David, do you want to set us up here? Um, tell, tell us about yeah. what the rules that we're playing yeah. by uh, on this one, and, and we can do different rules and do these again. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, give us the yeah, the plan is we're going to do multiple mock drafts for you guys used on different platforms. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about how to create the perfect ESPN draft. Uh, we're, now, we are using the Fantasy Pros uh, mock draft room. Uh, number one, it's very customizable. It also helps us do a mock draft without having – 11 other owners and uh and so uh that's going to give us time to talk about what we want to do but let's just dive right into it traditional espn scoring and setup we're going to go with a 12 team league uh we're going to go with a traditional setup of one quarterback two running backs two receivers one tight end one flex which could be wide receiver running back or tight end as well as a defensive team and a, a defensive team and a kicker seven bench spots Traditional scoring, it is PPR, four-point quarterback touchdowns uh, thrown mm -hmm. in the air, and all the other standard stuff that you normally get. So, uh, that being said, we are in the fifth slot. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, and I'm just going to let you guys know, you guys know us. You're going to find out our strategy is going to go pretty hard, hard in the direction of running back, running back, running back. <laughs> and we're <laughs> well, going to talk think about why. Listen, listen to us before, you'll uh, – they, they probably guessed that. But. Well, well – so we'll quickly get to that, and we're, we're going to yeah. talk about why, especially for 2020, okay? 2020, is, it just sets up perfectly for the way we like to draft. Now, obviously, we could be wrong. Half the people are wrong, and everybody's wrong about some things. But anyway, let's just do this. Let's get it started and see what happens. Yeah, let's have fun with it. Guys, uh, this is the first time that I've done this share screen on this. So uh, if I'm not looking directly at the camera, I'm not ignoring you. I'm having to kind of <laughs> manage this. So it's forgive cool. me. Uh, we're going to get going, though. You ready? Let's, Let's do, do this. All right. We've got this set up on a 10-minute uh, clock. Obviously, the computer will generate picks really quickly, but we want to give ourselves just a little bit of time to talk about our picks. And uh, let's see here. Here we go. Start draft. Start draft. Hammercast Network should be. Okay. So, obviously, uh, being the fifth pick, uh, it's going to be real interesting to see how it goes uh we got the draft board up here uh as soon as he hits go uh i'm i'm, I'm anticipating christian mccaffrey one barkley two ezekiel elliott three and there's a good chance that it's going to be camara or michael thomas four and i'm anxious to to see where that lands because sitting there in the five spot i would mm -hmm. love to love to get a guy like camara what do you think the odds up? are that we take michael thomas Zero. <laughs> not likely well we don't have to already but look, here's the surprise. Oh, wow. Look wow. at that draft board. Ooh. Christian McCaffrey goes number one as expected. Kamara goes number two. Oh my gosh! Well, then Barkley. So Michael Thomas. So guys, is this is this just like pure uh, heaven for us? 
Yeah. Do yeah, we just go ahead Elliot, and right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You don't even have to talk about it. This is uh that's a Zeke Elliott clip for us. He's an auto smash. Look at the running backs. Yeah, with this ESPN set up. The board. Yeah. All right, so Dalvin Cook goes after Zeke. Uh, yeah, and then Derek Henry, okay Eckler. Eckler. Eckler, look how fast Eckler went. Wow. Kenyon Drake. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so here we are. We're sitting at 2-8. We've already got 12 running backs off the board. Uh, and so let's go ahead and look and see what we got available for us, guys. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what we got here. Just click on running um, back. <laughs> just click on running back. Oh, uh, actually, this is not as pretty as I would have hoped. A lot of them's gone. I don't know, guys. Oof. Well, well, right now we got Aaron Jones. We got Todd Gurley. We got Leonard Fournette. We got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Chris Carson, Melvin Gordon. Keep going, scroll down a little bit. Jonathan well, there's Taylor. JT. We know that we want JT, but we're not going to draft him right here. Right. And a, and a lot of you are probably saying, why would you, why are you thinking about JT? And we did a whole podcast on Jonathan Taylor. I, I highly recommend it. It's a short video, a short podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but also one of the other things we'll talk about is, is offensive line continuity. Uh, when the offensive line has everybody returning, they know what everybody's going to be doing. Uh, that's a that's a big advantage right now. The Indianapolis Colts has the number one line for continuity. They're returning all of their offensive line starters, and so we'll get to more of that later. But as of right now, guys, I'm I'm sold on. Uh, well, go back to running back. Well, mm -hmm. I know we're just looking. We're showing everybody. Yeah, what just real quick while you're looking at receivers, there, I think this is kind of a good thing to point out. Like if you look at sort of what's happening here over the last you know several picks, you're starting to see those receivers fly off the board. And, you know, that's a lot of times a lot of managers uh, would panic here and be like, oh, i got to grab one. You know, I'm going to have to grab a receiver here because they're flying off the board. Right. Uh, I think part of the point of us doing this podcast is, is to show you guys that you don't have to do that. Um, yeah, exactly. And even though those guys are flying off the board right now, as Dave said, let's pull up that running back section again. Um, <laughs> let's just go right to the running backs. Uh, that's, that's where we're going to find – that's where we're going to find our best value. And, and because, guys, honestly, guys, once you get through the top 20 running backs or the top 18 or top 12, uh, it, well, you're basically, you'll see why. If we don't take one, then we're, we would have to go basically that zero running back other than that first pick, and we don't like that strategy. Um, guys, I'm sold on Aaron Jones all the way. I am too, yeah. Like, I, I know that a lot of people are, are fading this guy, and uh, I think we, we've talked about this in podcasts as well, um, that – you know, even even with some uh, regression from Aaron Jones, he's still going to be uh, a very productive back uh, to, you know, he'd have to re regress dramatically uh, to, to not make this pick worth it. Yeah, he was the number two running back last year, and, and this is PPR. Uh, the, 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 the Packers didn't do anything to help Rodgers out in that passing game. As a matter of fact, it just news came out today that Devin Funches is opting out. Yeah, I saw uh, that. They're going to rely on that running game. And so Aaron Jones is a great PPR running back in the second round. And not a single running back went off the board. Ooh, uh, and I here we are that. at 3 5. So hey, I got a feeling that we might be able to wait to get JT in the next round. I'm serious. You think? Yeah. So what are you thinking here? You want to you wanna take a look at the, uh, the, so let's uh, look receivers at the roster again? Um, let's look at the roster again. I can click right here, and it'll show you who our starting lineup is. You see right here, guys? Two running backs, right two there. wide receivers. Obviously, we've only had two picks. but So, if this was a two running back must start three wide receiver, I think that we may change, or if it was multiple flex spots. Uh, I'm going to want to start Jonathan Taylor, I think. Don't you guys? I'm, so I'm maybe, on board. Wait, wait, go back right? to the running backs. Go back to the running backs. Okay. I mean, you got Gurley, you got Fournette, Clyde, Carson, Gordon, Melvin Gordon. I don't like any of them. Not not um, that much. You know, he's going to be a running back three. I, I say just take him. Let's just take Taylor. We don't have to. I mean, I'll do it, but he will be there. Well, he may not. Yeah, it's a lot of picks to go by. Um, He'll be there, guys. Look how far down he is on this list. But let's just be honest. We're not playing against computers all the time, and neither are our listeners. Mark, or mark my words. There's no way that Mark Ingram – on any of my drafts that I've seen is going before Jonathan Taylor. Let's go ahead and get him. We want him, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we got to put our money where, where, where our mouth well, is. Well, 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 let's think about it. If you guys really believe that he's going to come back in the next round, we can get I think the, top, he will. The, top, the top receiver. 
Uh, and then DJ Moore is, is just an amazing player to get right here. Well, DJ and Moore the, will not be there. Neither will Adam Thielen. And if we don't right. get one of those guys, DJ I'm not, Moore, I believe, is going to be a top five receiver overall. And look at all the receivers off the board already. And let's so do it. We'll be able to get DJ Moore and, and take a chance at getting Jonathan Taylor on the, on the four. Well, uh, and if Jonathan think, Taylor's not there, we still have a decent running back. We've already filled our two mandatory starting running back yep. slots. This is a little bit of against our grain because typically we like to go three in a row. But with a guy like DJ Moore sitting there with all the other ones gone, what do you think, Chad? There, there's, there's no um, reason DJ should still be there. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I actually didn't realize he was still he was still available. Yeah, it's, 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 over it's a smash. Um, yeah, a smash. I think smash and go. All right. And then we'll pray JT's still there. He'll be there. Book it. <laughs> there goes Clyde. Todd Gurley Fournette. Oh, my God. I hate Hang on. Let this. me scoot it over so we can see. Come on. It's getting close. We did it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah, we so. gambled a little bit. Speaking of gambling, guys, uh, make sure that you check out our DFS section on hammercast.com. We've got some cool stuff coming up. Absolutely. All right. All right, guys. I think this is a pretty easy pick right here. <laughs> is it? <laughs> if you go back yeah, to running back. Over there. Let me go over and yeah, see. What you're we making got. me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's not going to last. Uh, there's only uh, four in front of him, and we got 10, eight yeah. picks, whatever. Smash it. Let's see what yeah. we get in five. Let's get him. Let's get him. Man, that's looking good. Uh, we got three yeah, solid happy. running backs, and we got DJ Moore. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yep, there goes the, the four. There goes four more, four, four running backs. So, so here we, we are. If we didn't take him, I think that he would have been gone. It would have been close. So here we are, fifth round. You want to look at receiver again? Yep. Now it's time to start. Ooh, we got some good ones. Wow. I like Lockett better than Metcalf. And I think that I like, I don't know. I'm on Chark. I'm on Chark all the way. It's, uh, I'd be happy with any of those four, but. Chark and Moore, they're both going to be the number one targets on their respective teams. They're both going to be in game scripts where they're throwing the ball a lot. And, uh, in, and I just, I, they are the safety valve. Yeah, and, Dave's, and Dave's so. preaching the preaching the truth uh, right there. Uh -huh. um, we know Jacksonville is not going to be a very good football team. Um, lucky that lucky for us, if we take Shark, that won't matter. It's only going to help us. So, yeah. Just so you guys I mean, and our listeners can see, there is zero tight ends that we're going to take right here. Yeah, I'm not the even thinking about tight end. Consider would have been um, one of the top three, probably. And they're not there. So, we're not going to do that you, right you, now. You know what I find interesting is that uh, Ertz went before Andrews in this draft. That's pretty interesting. All yeah. right. So, we're going to go ahead and snag Chark. Yeah, I think so, don't you? There's no point in taking a quarterback right now because of the scoring in this league. Again, Dave, what's the scoring here? Is it, It's four points a touchdown? Yeah, four-point quarterback touchdowns. Um, not a super now, fun. obviously, some people can – you can customize this year. Uh, even if it's six, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you're playing a single quarterback league – uh, there's no reason to take a quarterback before round eight or round seven. Yeah. Uh, when you only have to start – when only 12 of the 32 teams, uh, you know, when you only have to start 12, uh, you got plenty of options. And Are we playing this as a dynasty or redraft? We didn't even talk about It's a that. redraft league. I'm yeah. sorry. Redraft, redraft league. ES, a traditional ESPN league. ES, you know. Yeah, we would not have drafted any different either way for us, but um, but it, so, it might make a difference in some of these later picks. Uh, let's see. Let's go so ahead and take Chark. We don't feel good about any of those guys right this minute. I'm not going to take a bench player for a, a, a starting Chark guy. Uh, we already got our a one flex spot filled yeah. with Taylor. You good with Chark, Chad? Yep, definitely. All right. That team is good about our team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those receivers. I, I might get another one of these if we uh, were playing this for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's back on us, guys. Oh, my God, that was fast. Let's take a look and see what happened here. All right. All the ones went that Devontae Parker went a little quicker than I thought, probably. Green. Oh, that's a little early for green. It's redraft, yeah, though. It's redraft. Yeah. I like Jarvis Landry. I think he'll be back and better. Or uh, yeah, at this at this point right now, what here's here's a common mistake people make. Okay. And and I see this every time. I think I know where you're people going. are trying to fill out their rosters. And we don't need to make that mistake. I'm yeah, of the belief that we keep drafting running backs and receivers. And uh, we've already got our starting running backs and receivers and our flex done. But while everybody else is trying to grab a tight end, a quarterback, and, and things like that, we got to keep taking the talent. 
the yeah. highest yes. graded talent. Exactly. And I would I would even look at another running back here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's see what we've got available. So on wide receivers right here, since we've already got it pulled up, um, we like a lot of these guys. But listen, there's a lot of guys down through here that we like too. It's Mike so Williams deep down there. Yeah, it's so Preston deep. With Jerry Judy. You know, I mean, it's so deep. Justin Jefferson's way down there, and I would take him over all the rookies. I would not be interested in taking Will Fuller. And <laughs> well, just I would, I would be interested in taking Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks, uh, I, I like, but I don't, I don't think we want him right here. Let's take a look at running backs. What do you say? I, I think we get that fourth running back, David Montgomery. I would, I would smash David Montgomery right What here. about Raheem Mustard? Mustard? Nope. <laughs> I would take Montgomery. He's guaranteed 250 carries. And uh, if you look at what he did with his – did you know that he was third in the NFL in inside the red zone five-yard line carries opportunity? Yeah, and you know what? Uh, if he is their workhorse, he is. He does catch the ball. He's not a, 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 a an 80-yard catch per season guy. But you're not, you're not going to get uh, a workhorse, especially in the – what are we, in the sixth round with 250 carries uh, in the primary ball carrier. He's the last of the, the volume guys. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm leaning towards Preston. Montgomery myself. Devin Singletary, I'm a little bit down on right now. I'm Kareem Hunt, I'd like to see him traded before I reached mm -hmm. out early for him. Mm -hmm. Mostert, I'm with you, uh, Dave. I like Mostert, and he's going to be probably the workhorse there. But I don't know if there is going to be a workhorse there. That, that, that's that's um, Shanahan. So Cam Akers, I don't like drafting that particular rookie this early. Chad, I love Cam Akers, but they're gonna they're gonna four headed monster there. They're gonna. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see how next that. Year, I think I'm with you. What do you think, Chad? Well, we uh, see I mean, yeah, here. I think I'm I'm kind of in the camp with with you guys as far as looking at running back here. I think uh, just because of the depth of wide receivers that are available, the the running backs have more scarcity right now uh, right. at this draft where we're at. Um, David Johnson, um, you know whether you like the fact that he's three yards in a cloud of dust every carry, he's still going to get a ton of carries and that's going to add up. And when you're, you're already setting with a stable that we have, that's not a bad option to have as a backup. All right. Listen, so, we've got, uh, there's only, there's only eight picks between our pick. <clears throat> it's not that many. Are there, is anybody standing out here for you on the wide receiver? Board no, that you there's think five running backs. I would take over any of those receivers. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I agree. All right. So we're in agreement. Yeah. Let's do it. So, I like that. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. Maybe we'll get Johnson on the way back. If we can get Johnson too, then we don't have to worry about anything ever. We got all our running backs. <clears throat> Johnson? I mean, it's just – it's he, – he is going to be – here's what I found when I discovered. Houston has one of the better uh, – uh, they have all of their offensive line starters coming back. They're going to have the continuity. Uh, they're running backs. Carlos Hyde scored rushed for a thousand yards on that offense last year. Um, they're going to have to run the ball more without Hopkins. Uh, Chad made some really good points. He's going to he's going to be a primary ball carrier. And he's is he there? I don't no, know I think he, he's he's off the board. Oh well, I thought you were talking about him because he was available. <laughs> no, I think he went. If you all right, this podcast it. is going straight out of nowhere. <laughs> no, yeah, it's been a long time ago. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I, you lost me. All right, so guys, here we are. We're at seven oh five. Um, let me. They've already seen to the to the right side of the screen. You saw Russell Wilson, Wilson, Josh Allen. You can see it. Cam Akers. I, that's too early for Cam Akers, but. I'd say look at the receivers now. Um, and get yeah. That, since we got four running backs. I still like Raheem Most Mostert, but let's take a look. Uh, Tell you what, boys. I don't know, Chad. What are you looking at right there? Um, I like Christian Kirk um, there. I like um, – and I like Brandon Cooks. Uh, you guys know I've had that conversation with you guys. Um I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to go back and look and see who we got there at running back. Um, I, I like Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Uh, the reason is, 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 is Deshaun Watson is a one-look guy, and he's the best receiver on that team, and he's the most reliable receiver on that team, and he could be the one-look receiver for Deshaun Watson. And, uh, and I think he has the most talent. He has the highest pedigree. And uh, I just think, I think Watson's good enough to make a receiver a, one, a number one receiver. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I don't care that much either way here. I, I kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards Marvin Jones in a redraft. But you know what? We can't go wrong, Kenneth. Marvin Jones would be great too. Uh, the only reason I would pick Cooks over Jones is because the stability of the, the quarterback position. But um, uh, and but Marvin Jones, I, I, I would have no problem taking Marvin Jones. Stafford loves him, and before Cooks he got hurt last year, he was he was uh, cranking it out. I like that Marvin Jones ha has been there. Um, Brandon Cooks, I like. He is on a new team. But I'll let you guys decide. I, I'm yeah. okay with either one Ted, of them. I, I, I'm fine with skipping all the way down right there to Christian Kirk. Yeah, well, one thing I was going to bring up with Kirk is that, you know, he's never been um, in a situation, you know, where he's basically going to be the th – third protected wide receiver, right? You know, like they're going to be defending him as the, the third wide receiver potentially with with D Hop and, and Fitzgerald there. Uh, he's going to be drawing pretty weak coverage assignments potentially week in, week out. I if I'm if I'm trying to draft on the upside and, and I want to feel like I want to take a chance right here, I probably go Kurt. If I feel like I'm needing more uh, stability and a safer pick, I would probably be looking at Jones or Cooks. That's well, we've absolutely. already filled out our starting lineup. I'm, I, my inclination here, guys, now is to go with Kirk. Yeah, let's take I'm a shot. You know, let's take I'm a sold. shot with him. We've already filled out our starting lineup, and I think that he could be dynamic. Marvin Jones. Yeah, he's going to be. A, good. Think about this. He's going to be a bye week fill in. Yeah. Uh, with with with, with, with a very high ceiling. Yep. So seventh round, we're good. Cool. I really like. I like. I would have liked any one of those, but good. Good draft so far. I think. I'd yeah, be very. Now, Oh, we're right. at eighth so, round. Look at all the running backs. Further, let's, yeah, let's take a look here. Let's see what, what happened behind us. Not a lot to talk about. Raheem Mostert, that's one we were kind of discussing. Yeah. Kareem I mean, think about, Yeah, think about that. We were, you know, we were potentially looking at Mostert at 6'8", and, you know, he didn't go to very well. Yeah. Yeah, they probably haven't updated since he just restructured his deal. Um, right, right. He would probably so, go earlier. But. So, 8'8", eight, eight, you guys want to take a peek at the quarterbacks? Now that we're in the eighth round? Yeah, now's the time to yeah, look. Let's see what we're looking at. Um, I'm still not sold that we have to take one, but let's take a look. I'm not our roster. Oh, guys, this looks <laughs> we nice. got Montgomery and Christian Kirk on the bench. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? And a lot of these guys are taking quarterbacks and tight ends, and uh, and you know what? We're still going to be fine there. I would look at the quarterbacks. We're going to need one. There. But, Actually, before you do that, look at how many quarterbacks have been taken. How many teams have a quarterback? Um, I tell you, this, is, this is something that's really cool. We can actually see this. We can see show drafted. So you're looking at seven, eight. Well, there's. You've had 11 quarterbacks taken. Every team's got a quarterback. 11 gone. Yeah. So, so think about that. So now we're in the eighth round. We don't have a quarterback. But you know what? Everybody's already got one. That's right. Well, look, and, and, and there's guys out there like Carson. Oh my God, Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz, Matt Stafford, Stafford like, Daniel Jones. There's plenty of Cam Newton, Baker Mayfield. You know what? Forget quarterback. Forget it. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back. I'm not sure about that. Hang on, um, because I think there's a significant tear drop here. Tear drop. <laughs> well, Carson Carson yeah. Wentz is the no brainer. If we're going to take a quarterback, we take Carson Wentz and, and, and smile. Well, and there you go. There's your tier three, and, and without even me seeing it. They're basically saying the same thing I was thinking. Did you yeah. see Carson Wentz, how bulked up he got? No, yeah, I didn't. I saw that. He I looks like that. the Incredible Hulk. I think we hey, should. You know what? Let's take a look and see which which teams still don't have one. I just We just went through that. Every team has only, one. Yeah, we're the only one. That's why I'm, like, passing. We're the yeah. only team. Okay, we're the only yeah, That's team. it. Take a look at, um, you know, tight end and just see where we're at there. No, no, no. Still tons of depth there as nope. far as, you know, that whole tier right there is basically, you know, the same. And then we only need pick. one. Yeah. yeah. Let's make a pick. Yeah. Yeah. Make a pick. I think, um, all right. Hey, this might be uh, – Guys, take Darius, guys. What do you think? Um, I like I like guys and he, Howard both. He, um, here, let me right. make one argument. Let me make one argument. We've got four running backs, three receivers. Uh, we already know that we got plenty of depth at quarterback and tight end coming our way. Geis's ADP is in the sixth round. We're in the the, the lighter part of the eighth round, and Geis can be. A, oh, by the way, he got one hundred percent cleared today. 
uh, he can absolutely be a league winner. Uh, upside, upside, upside. And right now, you know what? At the eighth round, to get a guy like that that could be a top five, top ten running back, yeah, his skill set. That's the kind of guy you. That's well, the kind of. That's how you win these leagues. Exactly. Last year, Austin Eckler was an eighth round guy. He ended up winning about, a lot of people I think leagues. Where he should be drafted. The, one of the points that I was going to make right here is that because the way we drafted earlier in this draft and we built the depth uh, and the security blanket that we have, it gives us that option to take that flyer on guys, right? Like the upside, same, same story with Kurt, right? Like the, that upside that they both have the potential of hitting are league, possible league winners. Absolutely. But you wouldn't want to do that if you didn't have something backing that up. Uh, but I agree. we don't have to worry about that now. And so I, I like that idea. I like going What I also that. like is the idea that we can trade. We have trade bait. There's some guys that are really shallow on running backs. And, uh, and that gives us if – if he does juice like we think he's going to, uh, we're going to have five deep in running back one upper potential candidates. And so um, – I say I, I'm with Dave and you, Chad, I think, on this. If it's not – okay, so what I just showed here, if you guys didn't see me click over, I went from predictor, which shows us where – what they say uh, will be gone, like 64% would mean that there's a 64% chance that he'd be gone – by our next pick, but I switched from that over to ADP so that we could uh, emphasize what Dave was talking about. Uh, so here, if I go to all, which is what we're on, ADP 82 for Darius Geis. That doesn't mean eighth round, guys, because we're in a 12, you know, that's 82nd pick. That doesn't mean in the eighth round. You, you guys get it. But the only other one that would be even closer is these two guys, and I don't like those as much. So do we agree? Darius guys, and then I love him. maybe pick up a quarterback on the way back. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think I, so. yeah, I think Wentz is going to be there when he gets gets to us. So yeah, and I'd even be if happy he's not, Wentz we're okay. Or, or Stafford, personally. So look, now these guys are are grabbing their their second second running backs. So here we are. So here we are. We, we got guys a potential league winner in the, the latter part of the eighth round, and now we're still sitting on Wentz. Yeah. Just snag Wentz and just laugh. Yeah. Ninth round. I'm okay with that. Let's do it. This is 3D chess, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, they just popped up value pick. We just got a thumbs up from the uh, the old nice. website here. Let's see if I can scoot over show everybody what's going on here now. There goes Gronk. Look at these guys drafting these defenses in the ninth and the tenth yes. round. Do not do that. Yeah, do not do that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I for years and years in these redraft leagues, I've quit drafting kickers altogether. I'll take one right before the uh, the week one. Uh, that way you can get a – I would much rather take a flyer on a – Well, there's got to be 24 available for you to choose from because nobody's – Exactly. Kickers. I don't even draft a kicker okay. during the draft, and I, I very rarely draft a defense. The only league that I have uh, that has kickers in it, it never fails. Somebody, somebody drafts a backup. Almost oh every God. time. <laughs> Guys, do not hey man, draft a kicker for the in your league. It, your, your last Unless pick, you have take a flyer on a receiver or a running back with upside. Hey, I've got a flyer that I wouldn't mind jumping on right here. I don't know. Right, clearly. I'm thinking Justin Jefferson. I'm with you. You are? Yeah. I love him. Uh, he's going to be the number one receiver by far. He is. He's going to be a, a starting slot receiver. Uh, very, uh, you know, you know, Christian, not Christian Kirk, <laughs> Kirk Cousins is, is a very efficient quarterback. He doesn't have Stephon Diggs. Uh, I think he's going to eat. Uh, he's going to be the number one receiver for all rookies. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, the only reason I would say that, if we didn't already have three wide receivers, I would want somebody with a little more stability and a little less unknown factor. But we don't need him to produce – in the beginning of the year. No. He could be a league winner for us come the back half of the year. He's going yeah, to be – I think he's going to have a good yeah, year. Out of what's immediately available right there, I, I definitely – yeah, again, you know, draft the upside, folks, right? If you're in a position and you've yeah. got the security to do so, draft the upside. And of those players there, nobody has more upside uh, than Justin Jefferson, arguably uh, Rager there potentially, but – yeah, and you got Preston Williams sitting there, but my problem with Preston Williams is I think the Dolphins are going to go to a ball control, running the game, uh, yeah, short pass game. type of def offense. That I think they're going to surprise people because I think two is going to end up playing, and I think they're going. Well, they got two running backs. Both running backs they they picked up 
uh, Howard and Brita are better than anything they had last year. Yep, agree. Hey, I'd like to make a point here to our listeners. If you're new to fantasy football, which most of you guys have played before, but um, this is too early to start taking handcuffs. Uh, so, like, I, I've started looking down through here, and you see Tony Pollard. Everybody agrees that if Tony Pollard actually somehow became the starting running back in Dallas, that he would be a number one, as in top 12 uh, running back. But it's too early to take. you got to pick players still here that have some upside that are going to be playing. Way too unless, early. To unless you have a, 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 ben, a bench like we have. I'm not saying to take him here. I'm, I'm all in on uh, Justin Jefferson. But the fact is, the way we draft it gives us so many more opportunities versus the guys that are scrambling for running backs right now. Yeah. Yeah, I would not draft a handcuff. Now, like Zach Moss is probably going to get a lot of carries, but I don't see Tony Pollard getting a lot of activity unless something happens to Zeke. Yeah. Well, one other thing to keep in mind, guys, is with COVID and the opt-outs and with the potential for mandatory sits, um, you're – you are going to want to handcuff more than you traditionally do uh, because of that reason. But to Kenneth's point, you typically don't want to do that at this typically point. You've got to wait till the 13th and 14th round for that. Right. Now we do have Ezekiel Elliott. So Pollard may not be a bad choice for us, but I think, you know, right here in the 11th round, I kind of like Pollard, but let's look at the tight ends. Well, I, I want to talk just why, why you guys are looking at tight ends. Um, you know, the, hey, what, the guys, thing with Pollard. To, uh... All right, so while you guys are checking out the, the tight ends, I'm, I'm just going to bring up a quick thing on, on Pollard. So uh, I'm in Texas here, so I hear tons and tons of uh, Cowboys talk. Uh, and yeah. so the one thing that, that's, you know, pretty widespread here is, is that McCarthy plans on using Pollard a lot differently than Garrett did. Uh, so even, you know, even as a handcuff, he's going to have uh, additional, you know, additional value there. So while we, you know, may not take him right here, it's something to consider uh, that we might. All right here. I just put it on the screen. Some of these, uh, the expert notes, if you will, if Zeke were to go down, he'd become a three down game script. Proof bell cow behind one of the league's best offensive lines. I'm kind of thinking that you're right. What you know you what, Chad? Uh, I think you bring up a valid point, and I love Pollard. I got him in the Scott Fishbowl League for that reason. And uh, the way our the way our draft has gone, we can afford to take a guy like that right now, especially with Zeke on our team. And uh, and just he, he, it's an insurance policy, a cheap insurance policy that could pay off huge dividends. So yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you too. Let's do that, and then let's hope that maybe um, we can get Antonio Gibson on the way back, and then we will lock up those two uh, running backs. <laughs> I'm glad you're <laughs> – we're tracking the same way, Kenneth. Uh, I, was, I was actually waiting for that because we have guys. We know what uh, Rivera wants to do with Gibson, and, uh, and once again with COVID and all the things going on, why not have the two of the best potential handcuffs in the league with Pollard and Zeke and Gibson and, and Geis? And maybe so, I'm missing uh, Let's pray that we get that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab Pollard. You guys agree? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, so here, here he is down the list just a little way. Oh, he, he's, I think we're going to have a good chance for that. Let's do it. Tony All Pollard? Right, so we got Pollard. Yep. Yeah, right. and listeners, you know, Dave is bringing up, you know, a pretty gold, a pretty big gold nugget here. Uh, this is not – Oh, there goes Gibson. Ah, it's not going to be a year <laughs> like any other year. You know, when we're talking about COVID, you know, that's – we would have really liked to have that guy, I think. So, uh, right. but we'll see. You know, we well, got – You know what? Of the two, Tony Pollard was the right choice. Uh, it was. 100%. It was. But, but, but let me show you guys something. You're looking at – you're probably looking at the same thing I'm looking at. Jasicki, Goddard, and Hooper all went off the board. Uh, there's, a, there's a tight end out there that we were looking at for the last pick, Noah Fant. Mm -hmm. He's still there. He was – one of the primary targets for Drew Locke when he came in, oh, actually for the whole, whole season. I really like a 12th round Noah Fant. Yeah, I like him and, and I like Johnny as well. Like those two right there together, I'm big on. A lot of people like Hawkinson. Um, I'm not as I'm, sold on Hawkinson. Well, I'm not as sold on him. Hawkinson's more either. of a we think that he could be really good where we're pretty dang sure that Noah Fant's going to be the main man there, right? Yeah. Um, well, a lot of people put a really, really high grade on Hawkinson, and he showed what he could do last year. And, of course, you know, he got hurt. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the quarterback went out. 
Well, uh, they're both number one draft capital. Um, it's just right. a matter of what do you – I'm okay with any of those guys. If you guys want to go tight in here, should we take a quick look at what's available? Yeah, let's do a quick round. Um, we still have Nicole Harry. I'm not uh, – I just don't want – You know what? Him. We're in the 12th round. I'm okay with getting a tight end and having our roster full at this point. That's, that's me. At this point, if yeah. we don't get and, one and that I didn't down think here, Fant would be there. Um, I, I, yeah. And I know that I, – I think their offense is going to be better than – as far as better well, game script than some of the others? Ken, if, the, if you look at wide receiver again real quick, if we play our cards right, we can potentially get Fant and then, you know, have an option at uh, Alan Lazard potentially um, with our next pick as well. So um, – I think we have a better chance of getting a tight end on the next round because everybody's already got one. If there – if there's somebody here that you really want, I'm just starting yeah, to see some of the really backups want. go. Like, for example, Team Seven's already got two tight ends. But you know what? I don't well, see a receiver worth jumping a, a, a quality tight end one type of – I'll tell you that – well, if, it, exactly. At today's point, if for, for me right here, I'm, I, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at Lazard um, uh, as probably the person I would want to, to approach – uh, on the wide receiver category, he's going to be there. If we take Fant or or if we take a different wide receiver here, Fant may be gone. My two I, would take, I, I agree. Um, you want Fant? I like Fant. I'm I okay do. with that. I feel pretty good about it. In fact, I feel really good about it. We've got a, a tight end that we all really like above some of these other tight ends that have gone before him. Yeah. I feel sort of lucky to get yeah, him. Just like we did with Carson Wentz. Okay. You want to? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. See, we got the value, value pick. pick. Thumbs up. Oh, there goes a defense again. All right, cool. So now, so we, yeah, we got some options here. You know, don't y'all um, love our our draft strategy in general? <laughs> because we well, just, when it's all said and done, we're going to show everybody the team. Uh, I, I really, I'm really liking this team. It makes me wish this was a real team for us. But uh, <laughs> I did too. I would trade some of mine for this one. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are. Um, this is our roster. I'm pulling it back up. Carson Wentz, Elliott, Aaron Jones, DJs, both Noah Fant. I, I'm loving. I'm loving the way that my Jonathan favorite Taylor. Course, is Jonathan Taylor. Look at the bench: Montgomery, Christian Kirk, Darius Geis, Justin Jefferson, Tony Pollard. All huge upside guys and great bye week fillers with volume opportunity. Okay, so uh, we've only got it four picks left if we want a good grade which we don't care about getting i don't care about the grade i care about championships <laughs> i know uh let's uh chad's on board with alan lazard I i'm okay with it uh aaron Rodgers seems to love the kid um there's a couple that i may take ahead of him but we have this is this is the beauty we have the flexibility to do what we want here Hey, can you scroll down just a little bit uh -huh. on the receivers? Yeah, sure. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of all in right here on Lazard, and with the news that Funchess ain't is 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 opting out, Lazard's Lazard's target rate with with Rogers was pretty damn good, and um, and he is there, he is going to be the number two receiver for Aaron Rodgers. And yeah. so it's either him or for me, you guys know how I, I have a big crush on Paris Campbell. Um, oh, hey, guess he's what? He's going to be the starting slot receiver. We have another handcuff here. Yeah. Uh -huh. That we could do. In fact, we may should do it. We have Aaron Jones and we have AJ Dillon sitting here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like, I like it, but I just think AJ Dillon's going to be a, <laughs> a third and one guy. I don't even think he's going to get as many red zones. I mean, he might. Well, that's the thing. It's a handcuff in case. In case right. Yeah. Else. That's the whole point of that. Yeah. If you yeah. wanted to go that route, I would rather do that than say an Anthony McFarlane because it's just not the same kind of running back style. Anthony McFarlane's not. Damian Harris is maybe we somebody we grab at the very last round if he's still there. Um, I'm okay yeah. with Lazard though. I think we're really deep at running back. I think I think we're we're, we're putting a lot of thought into this, but uh, Lazard to me is the guy. Um. All right, we got him. Yeah, I think we nice. all agree on that. And let's we see. Weren't far off on, you weren't far off on Dylan, though, Kenneth. 
Yeah. Two picks later. And there goes Harris. And Damon Harris just went. Um, um, woo. I, okay. There's a, uh, I, I, is Johnny still? Johnny's still around. I don't I'm know if you want to take there. another. Is Hawkinson still there too? I would take Johnny Smith. Why not? Uh, Hawkinson, yeah. there's no way he's going to be there. Uh, you know what? I would, I would actually. Jack Doyle's talking about maybe not playing. Did you see that tweet today? He's just, I don't know if he was just messing around or what, but no, no, maybe it was Ebron. It is Ebron. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. not huge on a, in, in, a, in a one tight end league. I'm taking a second tight end. I'd rather get those upside running backs and receivers myself. And uh, I see Paris Campbell there. Well, uh, best offensive line in the league, slot receiver. Uh, Phillip Rivers loves the slot. I, I think I think people are overlooking him. We're in the 14th round, the end of the 14th round. And my I only, think he's a, he's my a only great upside guy. Here. My only counterpoint on that would be it, it really just it really just depends on how much how how strongly you feel about Fant, right? Like, you know, we uh we push back to to go deeper in the the tight end selection. Um, so if I'm not saying we're going to do this, but you know, if you did the same thing, listener, in a, in a draft like this, and you say you ended up with a tight end that maybe you had some question marks, you might, you know, in this situation, you might want to take a second one. Uh, I'm actually but, on board with taking another tight end. Here's the reason: is because you 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 have to get you have to have two. This isn't a kicker that you can just take a flyer on. Um, I, I stream tight ends every year. Uh, I really do. Cause, cause they're all the same after like eight of them and, and, and they're inconsistent. Well, I mean, is, we'll take one, go somebody. ahead and take one. Uh, yeah, if you, you guys feel good about it, pick one up. I'd rather, I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking for upside and tradability. Um, well, I think you can get that here as well. Um, I mean, I look at, I look old, I look at, I look at Irv Smith. I look at Ian Thomas. I look at Greg Olson, OJ Howard. There's a t Jay Sternberg, the starter for green Bay, Dawson Knox. Yeah. There's so many tight ends out there. Um, there's a lot. The tight ends are super deep. Um, I have a, you know, deepest really, year in the last 10 years. Yeah, I have a really strong feeling about Johnny. That's why I bring it up. But um, mm. I, I think Titans. That, yeah. You think? <laughs> uh, you guys want to take a second tight end? Go ahead. We're we're a group here. I, I'm Dave, fine. You know, like, yeah, Dave, you make really really good points. I think it is a good point. There's a lot of good ones still there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is where sometimes your homerism can get in in the way of, of making uh, the better decision. So, who out there could be a league winner right now? A league and, winner? And that's a league. Not, yeah, well, not no a, tight end is going to be a league winner at this point. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but if you look at some of these receivers, like look at Hunter Renfro, look at Denzel Mims. Hunter Renfro is um, way down. And he's got like four inch hands. <laughs> eight. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll, I'm still I'm still in love with a slot receiver for the best offensive line in football, um, in Philip Rivers, who loves throwing yeah. to a slot receiver. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, okay, so in 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 this scenario, sorry, my stuttering, I'm trying to catch my thoughts up to my mouth or vice versa. So Parrish Campbell is is where Dave's going, but you know who's down here on the list that we could maybe grab in the fifteenth round is John Ross. I really love John Ross this year, but he's so far down. There's no way he's going to go before it comes back to us. Am I, am I right on that? Yeah, he'll be there if that's where we go. Um, and then we can discuss that when he gets here. Or do we need a second quarterback? Hey, no. Still, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm a, yes, we do. Yeah. But we can take, take Joe Burrow. Draft. Take Joe Burrow and be, and, 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 you know, but we could, but I there's, mean, there's so many you, quarterbacks I mean, out we, there. Yeah. It's a could, single quarterback league. It's just like tight end. Tight end or quarterback could be one of our last picks. Let's take Johnny. I, I'm, uh, Okay. What do you want to do? What do y'all want to do? All right. Here's I, my vote. I, I, I'll I, take a receiver. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll go Campbell as well. Okay, I'm outvoted. Let's take Campbell, and I'm happy with that too. Yeah. Okay. Now, if John is here the next time. <laughs> yeah. He will be, guys. Nobody's. Not many is. people are taking two tight ends. Yeah. There you go. You guys, uh, you guys love him. Take him. Do it. I love him. All right. We, we're I'll allowed. Do it. We're allowed one homer pick per. Do it. Uh, draft we so I'm going, we've already got the championship we're in the 15th round <laughs> we're, we're toying hey, let's with these take guys a defense at the end just so that we don't get an f seriously just so that we don't get an f i don't care about the titan the, the grades but yeah if you want to take a defense go for it um i don't I'll, about the I'll stream <laughs> well i mean i think if we're not going to take a defense um this is where i would want to snag that 
backup quarterback for sure. Uh, and I think Gardner Minshew or someone like that available. I actually like uh, Minshew. Yeah. And we Minshew. got, it, it, we could stack him with Chark. Yeah. But if we want to do defense, I'm fine with that too. If it, you know, I don't I, care. I, I defense, would much rather have a Minshew have even, than a defense. We shouldn't have even set it up with a defense because that skewed everything. If we were but, but be guys, it's ESPN league, and that's what yeah. we're doing for you guys. Right. It's an ESPN league. I just want to show you guys that you don't have to draft a defense or a tight end. I mean, not a tight end or a um, kicker. kicker. You could pick those guys up. You could stream them. And what I would do is I would look at the best matchups available, defenses versus offense. And, uh, and I've had tremendous success streaming kickers, tight ends, and defenses all year in these types of leagues. Get your quality players that you can either utilize or trade because they're going to have more value if they hit. And so that's your chance to get your league winners. So here, I've got a question on this, and we've got just a, a minute, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But So some leagues – and I'm not sure about how the standard ESPN league is, but once you do your draft, you cannot take uh, – or what is it, Chad, in our, in our Yahoo league? We can't, we can't pick uh, up – It player. just depends on how, like, people set it up. The one thing I was going to bring up is you might have a commissioner that says, no, you've got to fill a uh, full roster uh, in your draft. Just understand right. your rules. Uh, yeah. I, most uh, most of your standard ESPN leagues, you can pick up players right before the game. Yeah. Okay. Um, They'll just open so, the window. At a so that's, that's, that's the way that's we're, we're going to play with. it. We're going to play it that way. Um, and then – in, in that scenario, there's only a few picks left, left. So let's pick one that. This is our last pick. It's our last pick. Um, Can you look at the running back one more time? And I know our, our listeners are probably going, all right, come on, guys. End it. Yeah, I know. Uh, there is. A, keep going. Nope. No. Nah, DJ nope. Dallas, maybe, but. No, go back up. Go back up. I'm going to say there's there's one guy. Chris Thompson. I would take Chris Thompson. He's Jacksonville's third down back. He's a pass catching back. Uh, well, he's the handcuff, and he you never know what's going to happen. And you don't know what they're going to do with Fournette. Uh, Chris Thompson is going to catch a ton of passes. And, uh, and oh, either that or, or take Minshew. Yeah. Let's get Minshew. Let's get our guy. You want to see? Stash, baby. Give me the stash. I like, him. I like Minshew because he has a great floor. Hey, look what we got. <laughs> Even without – see, look at this. We didn't take a defense or a kicker, or a kick. and we got an A-. minus. That's incredible. Think about that. Wow. Look what we did. Uh, so, so, listeners, just, just pay attention here. You don't have to do those things. You don't have to fill that roster out. Grab the talent. We didn't take a quarterback until the ninth round. We didn't take a, a, a tight end until, what, the 14th round? <laughs> we're projecting get your talent get all. Your... we don't even have two slots filled <laughs> <laughs> look how close exactly. we were to being the number one yeah so yeah 10 points from number one team so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that uh we're gonna do something what we call shot takes are we are we gonna do a shot take tonight nah, we don't or need is to this do whole show take. a shot take i uh, yeah, this whole show was our my shot take is is if you're in one of these leagues uh do not draft the defense unless you have to. Do not draft the kicker unless you have to. Um, and, you know, proof is in the pudding, guys. Set yourself up for uh, success early on. Build that strong base so that you can take chances later in the draft and feel uh, at ease with those. Uh, it'll make all the difference in the world for you. Um, and it's it, like I said earlier, it's you'll be the one playing 3D chess when everybody else is playing checkers. Absolutely. Uh, hey, guys, you know what? That turned out pretty good. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us. This is really important that you go to hammercast.com and join the Hammer Nation. So we have giveaways every month. So if you happen to get in in July, we're right here at the end of the month. Um, you're going to be entered for the Alvin Kamara jersey. If you happen to get in in August, you will not believe what's going to be available for you. You want to get into either, either one of them, you're going to be uh, entered. Uh, Kenneth, you forgot to mention that Alvin Kamara jersey is a certified autographed jersey. I sure did forget that. Thank you very much, Dave. And guys, it is sweet. We have it in hand, and it cannot wait to find its new home. <laughs> Another thing, guys, about uh, the Hammer Nation uh, and going over to Hammercast, we have DFS information. We have Debbie League information. We have Redraft. We have Dynasty. We have everything that you can think of. Um, we really hope that you enjoy the content. And let us Please know what you like, think. subscribe, oh. share, hit that little bell, do all, all those little things. things. It helps us grow. And uh, we look forward to coming out with more content. Absolutely. Almost, what, three times do a week, all guys? The things. Yeah.
Chad, why don't, you, uh, why don't you give us a hammer before we leave? The sledgehammer. Well, you know, one thing that I know is that we dropped the sledgehammer on this draft. <laughs> yeah, we did. Awesome. Don't guys. draft Thanks a kicker. <laughs> don't yeah, draft no a kicker. kicker. Don't even hey, and if you start leagues, don't make people draft kickers. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, honestly, you shouldn't be in a league with kickers. But right. do it and do it well. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Did you get all that? If not, make sure you head over to hammercast.com. Subscribe and join the Hammer Nation. Until next time, keep grinding.